Perfect Circle is a rock band that was founded back in 1999 and is known for being a supergroup made up by rock artists that have already made success with previous bands. Some early members include Maynard James Keenan from Tool, guitarist Troy Van Leeuwen, who had worked with bands like Orgy and Korn, and drummer Tim Alexander, who's best known for his work with Primus. But the founding father of this band is Billy Howardell. He's worked as a guitar tech for the likes of David Bowie, The Smashing Pumpkins, Nine Inch Nails, and Tool. And a perfect circle was his opportunity to finally take the stage himself. But with a strong musical figure like Maynard by his side, there certainly were opposing arguments in their recording sessions. So in this video, let's take a closer look at how these two guys came together to create the sound of a perfect circle. Howardell met Maynard in 92 when Tool was opening for Fishbone. They became friends, and a few years later, Maynard offered Howardell, who was looking for lodging, a room in his North Hollywood home. During his stay, Howardell played some of his demos for Maynard, and he ended up with a very positive first impression. In an interview, Keenan remarked, I can hear myself singing those songs. Howardell originally wanted a female vocalist for this project, but eventually he couldn't resist the offer of Maynard as the vocalist, and a short time later the band was formed. They played their first show at LA's Viper Club reception in 1999, and they probably played some early versions of songs that would be featured on their debut album, Mirror de Noms. In an album review by Rolling Stone, Pat Blashill wrote that Keenan added an almost operatic angst to Howardell's songs, and concluded that a perfect circle sound like a desperate dream from what rock used to be. Maybe that's the point. Merit and Noms is considered to be their hard rock album. During its production, Howardell had already finalized all of the music so that Keenan's only focus was to add lyrics and vocals. This was a creative process that Maynard was used to dealing with from his other band. And because of that familiarity, the creative process went very, very smooth. But while creating their second album, 13th Step, Howardell and Keenan collaborated on the musical ideas, something that led to a lot of conflicting ideas along the way. For example, Howardell often wanted the songs to have a more heavy appeal, while Keenan would push a softer and more mellow sound, with the goal of keeping a perfect circle different compared to the sound of Tool. As a result, you can hear both heavy and hard-hitting soundscapes and very soothing soundscapes circulating throughout the record. I think it's safe to say that if you want something heavy, listen to Meridinoms, while if you want a symbiosis between hard rock and atmospheric segments, go for the 13th step. Howardell is the main driving force behind the music. In an interview, he cited four albums as his biggest inspirations for a perfect circle sound. Adam Ants, King of the Wild Frontier, Susie and the Banshees, Tinderbox, Ozzy Osbourne's Diary of a Madman, and finally, The Cure's Pornography. Howardell has described some of these records as very dark and spooky, which I think you can almost instantly feel when listening to one of his own songs. Now, I actually sat down and listened to all of those albums, and I just want to say that Susie and the Banshees album, Tinderbox, is actually the one that bears the most resemblance to Howardell's own guitar playing. Just listen to the similarity between the following songs. All of these melodies have an almost apocalyptic feel to them, which might explain why one of A Perfect Circle's songs were featured as a soundtrack for Resident Evil Apocalypse. Now, Howardell might take the most inspiration melody-wise from Tinderbox, but there are some resemblances between the drumming on The Cure's pornography and 13th Step. Just listen to this.
Although they've never mentioned it themselves, it's possible that they draw inspiration from Failure, an alternative rock band that was founded in 1990 in Los Angeles. On the 13th Step Records, they covered their song, The Nurse Who Loved Me, and I think there's a clear resemblance in their angst-driven melodies in general. So that's the inspiration for a lot of their music, but what about their lyrics? Maynard has stated several times that the lyrics he makes for A Perfect Circle songs are a bit more personal compared to the songs he make for his other bands, Tool and Pucifer. Merida Noms, in particular, is an album where he sings about hurtful relationships and scenarios from his own life. I used to believe that everyone, their intention in the world was to learn more, to do better, to seek out truth, and the older I get I realize that that's not the case with most people. They're pretty content with the way things are, and just kind of live day by day I guess. And this song is about the kind of people who recognize that other people recognize that there's something going on with a person, an individual or a situation, and they're kind of like the clingers on, so to speak. They're kind of like the particles, parasites. They recognize there's an energy on some level, but they just kind of feed on it rather than add to it or grow from it. And it just so happens that I had several individuals in my life that fit that description. Maynard has also stated that poetry helps him get over pain and emotional turmoil. He's using it as a form of self-therapy. But painful social experiences and scenarios aren't the only things that bring him inspiration. He also seems to tie these personal experiences with religion. Just listen to this quote about one of their songs called Magdalena. Quote, Magdalena in particular would be very specific if you've done any kind of studies on the whole Magdalene principle and the Western Christianity. There's a lot of controversy surrounding the role of Mary Magdalene, and I guess if anyone is really interested in exploring that song, maybe start there. Start explore some of the more radical publications surrounding her role 2000 years ago. What it was. Was she a whore or was she not? While Merida Noms partially deals with themes of hurtful personal relationships and religion, the 13th Steps lyrics deal with the theme of addiction. Almost every song on the album deals with that subject. In a behind the scenes video for the song Weak and Powerless, they talk about how it's not specifically addiction to a substance, but just addiction in general. The members went on to explain how you could be addicted to falling in love or hurting someone. So now that we know where the musical and lyrical ideas are coming from, let's take a closer look at the production of the records. Production-wise, Billy was involved on both Meriden Arms and on 13th Step. He's mentioned that he learned a lot from the production he did with other bands, such as Guns N' Roses, where he first started getting his hands on computer tech and digital recording strategies. Mirror Denoms was recorded entirely using Pro Tools hardware and logical audio, and then they mixed it onto analog tape from there. As Howard L said himself, the digital realm is on top of sounding really good. It's just so flexible. It's as much of a tool or instrument to me as a guitar or a keyboard. It's certainly as expressive, or more so. Now I want to move on and talk about their later albums as well. Emotive is their third record and is probably the band's most political record. Almost the entire album consists of anti-war themed cover songs such as Imagine by John Lennon and What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. The record was meant to coincide with the US presidential election with its release on November 1st of 2004, just one day before the election was held. What's interesting is that Keenan emphasized during the promotion of this album that it wasn't so much of an anti-Bush record, but more of an anti-political apathy record. His intention with these war songs was to get people more involved and interested and concerned about politics, enough to make them do their own research. Now, many of the album's songs are melodically unrecognizable compared to their originals. 
As Howard L pointed out in interviews, some songs started out as original material, but then they decided to use lyrics from other songs on top of that, ultimately creating a completely reworked cover song. Out of the 12 tracks on the album, only two of them are original songs made by A Perfect Circle. But because of the band's powerful musical style, it often sounds like these songs could be their own. Just listen to their John Lennon cover, for example. Imagine there's no heaven now, if we move on, we find their new album, Eat the Elephant. Some of their sounds on this album was actually influenced by the Pesh Mode, and Howard L didn't expand on what the Pesh Mode album or sound that inspired him, but I think he's referencing their approach to creating a dark style of pop music. I don't think it's correct to call all the music on this album pop music, but if you listen to some of the tracks like Dissolution, for example, you'll find that this song is much more softer compared to what they did before. The verses and after choruses are driven mainly by a piano melody as opposed to a guitar. You can also hear this softer approach in the intro to Talk Talk, where you can hear both the piano and the guitar playing the same notes. Some of the songs are known for their criticism of society, politics, and consumer culture. This is clearly seen in the music video for Dissolutioned, portraying a cult of people that are completely consumed by technology. The main character manages to escape this place, creates a deeper and more meaningful bond with the people on the outside, and decides to bring more people from the cult into quote-unquote the real world. It's very clear to see that Maynard takes inspiration from what's happening in our culture. As he stated in an interview, in light of this current difficult and polarized social, spiritual and political climate, we artist types need to open our big mouths and share the light a little louder. Although Maynard is a bit hesitant of sharing the creative process behind the album, he has several times claimed that accountability is a very central theme here. The fact that each and every one of us has a bigger chance of changing our society if we first change ourselves instead of pointing fingers at others. About this, Maynard said, the album is about reconnecting and taking responsibility for yourself. There's accountability with that and in yourself. What are you doing to help your family? What are you doing to look at yourself and figure out what part of the problem you are? I don't think any of this stuff is going to be fixed. Pointing a finger at Trump isn't going to get anything done. And yeah, he is a buffoon. He's not the only buffoon. Cutting the head off the snake's not going to do shit. I think it was super interesting to look into the inspirations of both Howard L and Maynard because both of them have very different inspirations. Billy takes inspiration from many old new wave albums and, and music, while Maynard takes inspiration from politics, current events, and also his spiritual and personal background. So it's a, it's a great mix here. Make sure you check out A Perfect Circle if you haven't heard them before. Make sure you do so. And that's it. At the end of this video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And I also want to bring an extra thanks to Amadio, F Fun, Kyle, Marek, Marlene, Marshall, Middle Eight, Mike, and Nick over at Patreon for supporting me over there. And if you want to support me as well and make this channel even better, make sure you click the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.